This video is looking at endo and exothermic reactions. So let's consider a reaction uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called an energy profile diagram. So we're going to have time along the bottom or progress of the reaction and up the y-axis we are going to have energy. And obviously the unit for energy is the joule and uh, time or progress of the reaction in seconds along the x-axis. So imagine I have two chemicals and I will use an example uh, methane and oxygen so if I'm doing a combustion reaction. Those two chemicals the methane and the oxygen have energy stored in their bonds. So they have a certain amount of energy at the start as individual reactants. When they react together in a combustion reaction, so when they burn, just like when we use a Bunsen burner, um, they're going to form products, which for this reaction will be carbon dioxide and water. So it's a typical combustion reaction. Now, to start the reaction, we have to do something. So the reaction doesn't begin on its own. So for example, if you turn a Bunsen burner on and you don't use a match or a splint to light it, the gas will mix, but it isn't going to react. So we have to put some energy in to get the reaction started. So this input energy is what we call the energy of activation. Now, uh, which I'll draw on in a second. Now, when we finish the reaction, energy is given out in the reaction. So heat is given to the surroundings. So this is an example of an exothermic reaction. So exo meaning out. So it means heat is given out. And so because heat is given out, in terms of the energy stored in the bonds of carbon dioxide and uh, water, the energy is lower on our energy profile diagram. Now you might wonder why that is. The bonds that are formed are more stable, so they don't need as much energy stored up to keep uh, the two, uh, the water and the, and the carbon dioxide to exist as a stable molecule. So energy is released to the surroundings when that happens. So water and carbon dioxide would go here on our diagram at a lower level. So I said that we had to put some energy in, like so. So in terms of labelling our diagram, the energy that we put into the reaction, which could be a little bit or it could be a lot, which is this region here, we call EA, or the energy of activation. It's the energy required to initiate or start any chemical reaction. Then, either excess energy is either given out, like in this example. So from here to there, you can see the arrow goes down. So the energy change okay, is negative. So we call this, in reactions, negative delta, which means a change in. And then we use H, not for energy, but for a symbol called enthalpy. Now, enthalpy is the same as energy, but it's what chemists use for energy. So enthalpy is energy per mole. So you can think of enthalpy and energy as pretty much the same thing. So because it has a negative delta H, this is an exothermic uh, reaction. So energy or heat is given out. Now, to understand the difference for an endothermic reaction, so N means in, okay? So an endothermic reaction is one where heat energy is taken in from the surroundings. So again, we have our energy profile diagram. Um, and again, we've got time and we've got energy or enthalpy because they are um, basically the same thing. Let me put the two words there, sorry. Energy. So just like before, our reactants will have a certain starting point on our diagram. But for an endothermic reaction, when we input the energy of activation, more energy is required than is released. And so the line is now higher up for an endothermic reaction. So to label the key points, our energy of activation is still the energy required 
to start the reaction. But now our change in energy is a positive delta H. And so this is what would happen for an endothermic uh, reaction. Uh, an example of which would be um, ammonium chloride and uh, barium hydroxide, sorry that's a bit messy, uh, would give me ammonium hydroxide and, uh, I'm just going to write this up here so you can see it, barium chloride. That would be an example of an endothermic reaction. So our energy of our products is higher up than the energy of our reactants and that means that energy has to be put in to get them to that point. And so that's why heat energy is taken from the surroundings in an endothermic reaction. Now one final thing just to add about this is the reason that a reaction is either endo or exothermic, going back to what I said right at the start, is that energy is stored in the bonds. So the energy stored in the bonds here is that um, is has to be uh, broken. Uh, so when a chemical reaction happens is that we start with our reactants, the energy in the bonds here is broken, and then energy is released when new bonds are made. And so whether it's overall exo or endothermic, it depends on whether more energy is required to break the bonds in the first place or to make new ones. So this first process that happens here, right, this is bond breaking. And that requires energy. The way to think about it is imagine you're in a supermarket and you've got um, a loads of, uh, like a load of tin cans all stacked up on each other. Um, for them to all fall down, uh, some small child's got to run into it and knock them all over. That requires energy. So when energy is used to break something, things don't break on their own, uh, that is energy has been having to be put in. So this process is bond breaking is an endothermic process because energy has to be put in to break the bonds. When we get to this point, energy is then released. This is called bond making. And just think of the feeling that you get when you've made something, you get like an energy release. So bond making is when energy is released, it is an exothermic process. And so whether the overall reaction is endothermic or exothermic depends on whether it takes more energy to break bonds in the first place or to make new ones. So in terms of what you are expected to know about exo and endothermic reactions, you should know the difference in terms of what whether heat goes into or from the surroundings. So in an exothermic reaction, heat goes into the surroundings. In an endothermic reaction, heat comes from the surroundings into the reactants, into the chemicals, and therefore it gets colder. Whereas in an exothermic reaction, the surroundings get warmer because heat energy is transferred to them. You should know that exothermic is a bond-making process and endothermic is a bond-breaking process. And you should know the shape of these two graphs. Don't get too worried about um, you know, the reasons for the height differential at this point. Just know that exo the enthalpy change is negative, and so this line is lower. And for endo, the enthalpy change is positive, so this line is higher. And you should know that all chemical reactions require an energy of activation in order to start them.